Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we're talking about atomic theory history. Here's just a brief timeline for you all to look at and kind of get a feel for what um, time all of this was taking place. So let's go into it. Democritus is first, and this is way back when, you guys, okay? He believed that all matter was made up of small little particles and that they were in a cube shape. But this didn't really explain a lot of things because we have objects in this world that are not all angular. They don't all come to points of a 90 degree angle. And we have things like gases, right? So it didn't work out. Um, so Dalton was the next scientist to kind of step up and say, hey, you know what? I think he was on to something, but I think they were in the shape of a sphere instead. That would explain why things have curved edges. And that would explain why we have gases and things like that. Um, but that didn't stick forever, right? Um, we have Thompson that came along after him, and he did an experiment that let him discover that we have negatively charged particles, and he called those electrons. So um, he also said the model was called the plum pudding model. Um, this is much easier nowadays if we think of it as a chocolate chip model or chocolate chip cookie, right? Um, so this is what his looked like. If you look at his atom, you can see the orange section is going to be all positively charged. And then he has a sprinkling of these electrons or negative charge pieces throughout. And this picture right here is a picture of old fashioned plum pudding, um, but it looks like a chopped soup cookie, right? So the cookie part or the pudding part back in the day would have been your positive section and then all of these plums, which really just look like chocolate chips to us, um, would have been the negative pieces that are scattered throughout the atom. Now, of course, this was an advancement to a solid particle, right? Now, all of a sudden, there's actually positives and negatives happening. Um, but there were still so many limitations, right? We didn't have a nucleus. We didn't have an electron cloud. Um, so there was much more that needed to be done over time. And then we get Rutherford and Rutherford conducted our gold foil experiment. Very famous experiment. He shot, po he shot particles at the atom using that gold foil, discovered that atoms have a solid center or a hard center. Um, and he called that the nucleus. He found out that the protons are inside the nucleus, um, but he didn't really know too much about the electrons at this point. They were kind of all scattered around the center portion that he called the nucleus. And this is the atom that we actually know is like the Jimmy Neutron atom that's on his shirt and that was on the movie, okay? Um, so the advancements were there, right? Now all of a sudden, um, we have a sphere made up of tiny particles and we have a nucleus inside um, and we have electrons around them. But we don't really know about the electron cloud at this point. So um, I like to think about this model being more about like what a avocado would look like if you look in the middle, the pit being the nucleus and then around it, all of that avocado fruit uh, would be where the electrons were just kind of going without any necessarily order um, to them at this point, right? So then we have Bohr. Bohr came along a little bit later and he actually calculated that most of the mass of the atom would be in its nucleus and that this mass would affect the uh, electron's behavior. So he proposed that the electron movement was not random, but that electrons traveled in paths or energy levels like planetary models. So like a planet would orbit the sun, electrons would orbit the nucleus just like that. So if you look over here, we have um, titanium and you can see that in the middle we have our nucleus and that the electrons are rotating around the nucleus in a circular motion just like the planets rotate around the sun. Um, and so this is what he said, uh, and that it was based off of um, energy in each energy level, right? So the advancements are there, okay? We have a, a nucleus, we have protons, we have neutrons. Um, we know that the heaviest part of the atom is now the nucleus, which is true. And electrons have been identified in energy levels and are not random. Um, limitations, the, ele the electrons are perfectly orbiting the nucleus in a neat predictable pathway. And that is where the limitation is because we know that not to be true anymore. So I wanna make a side note really quick. Bohr did not discover the neutron, okay? Chadwick, another scientist, 
discovered the Neutron. I want to give Chadwick his credit, and that's due. Um, so although Chadwick did not have his very own atomic model that we're learning about, Bohr did, and Bohr kind of used Chadwick's knowledge of the Neutron in the Bohr diagram. So I just want to side note that, okay? Okay, so then the next one that really came along is our current model. You can hear it known as the modern model or even the quantum model. Um, and that's just because we have new advanced technology now, okay? So now we can determine the speed of an electron. Because we know how fast they're moving, we know that they can't be moving perfectly around the nucleus like the planetary model that Bohr suggested, okay? It has way too much energy. They're going way too fast to do that. So now we accept that there are orbitals and sublevels within what we now call an electron cloud, okay? So they're not, no, they're not in energy levels like Bohr. They're in an energy cloud or an electron cloud instead of orbitals and sublevels. So you can see some of these orbitals here. And this is based off of how many electrons you have and the energy associated with that. So we have the s orbital, p orbitals, d orbitals, and then f orbitals. And they're um, all unique and different shaped, right? Um, but this is our new claim, and this is what we believe even to this day. Um, we do have tons of advancements learning about our clouds, orbitals, and sublevels, but our limitations are still there even currently to this day. We are still not able to know the position and the speed of an electron at the same time. So hopefully with new technology, we will be able to determine these things simultaneously. And I just wanted to give you this brief summary of everything you just learned today. So here we go in, in a speed time. Dalton, he thought atoms were a sphere. Thompson, he thought they were the plum pudding model, positive all over with a sprinkling of electrons or negative charges. Rutherford did the gold foil experiment, discovered protons and neutrons are in the center, right? And then we have Bohr. He really thought that there were um, a planetary model where there are energy levels where all of the electrons were rotating around the nucleus. He did not discover a neutron, but he did put it in the middle of the nucleus as well. And then we have today's model, which is the quantum, the modern um, model or the current model. And that was mostly cr accredited to Schrodinger. However, there were other scientists that worked on this too. And that is what's called the cloud model, where we have orbitals and sublevels for our electrons. We still know there's a nucleus and that there's protons and neutrons in that nucleus. I hope this was helpful, you guys. Go ahead and subscribe if you like this video and you want to see more. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye.